listening to is Imam Muhammad Asi. Imam Asi is the leader of Muslims in the metropolitan Washington, D.C. area. He previously led the daily and Jumu'ah prayers inside the Islamic Center. His speeches were inspiring, revolutionary, and thought-provoking, which eventually irritated and threatened the Middle East ambassadors who controlled the masjid. Finally, the Imam, his family, and other Muslims faithful to the cause of Islam were forced out into the streets. This khutbah originates from the sidewalk across the street from the Islamic Center, currently under sea.
كفى بالله وليا وكفى بالله حسيبا أما بعد committed Muslims Muslims of faith and action Muslims of divine responsibilities and rights these days the activities that impact on the lives of millions of human beings, especially if those human beings are Muslims, it is only right for us to try to take a look at some of these issues unlike the way they are presented to us. To take a look at these issues with a mind that thinks Quranically and with a behavior that acts prophetically. To take a look at some of these events that have their direct impact upon our lives. One of these events concerns the right that Muslims have, that human, forget about Muslims for the time, that human beings have to enact a consensual agreement with those who rule them. But as it turns out, in the assortment of affairs in this world, Muslims are denied this divine and this earthly right. You saw that there were elections a couple of weeks ago. There were elections in the land that was stolen from us. The Zionist Israeli Jews held their elections. And the results are very well known now. But no one wants to present this issue in another light. And that is, there were elections before that in few Muslim areas. There were elections in the immediate area to the south of that stolen land in Egypt. But before the elections took place, what did the government do? It went and it threw those who are Islamically oriented behind bars. It put them in prison to hold its elections. And it accused them of trumped up charges. None of them were correct, none of them were factual, and none of them were valid. Yet, in preparation for such elections, that government threw those of an Islamic orientation into prison. Whether they were so-called moderates who agreed with the government not to use force, who had fielded candidates for the majlis or the parliament there, who had renounced in public the use of force or violence to oppose the government, but that did not vouch for them. They were thrown in prison with the so-called hardliners. And for the elections to go ahead, all of these had to be behind bars. Now, the question is, why when Yehud, when the Israelis want to have elections, they don't throw their quote-unquote 
religious factions or religious parties or those who are Judaically oriented, why don't they throw those behind bars? No, that wasn't the case. They ran for offices. They ran for seats in Parliament for the first time since the concoction of that artificial state in 1948. They have almost one-fifth of the seats of Parliament or their Knesset. Now, observe the hypocritical attitude of the eyes and the ears in the media when it comes to comparing elections in one area and com comparing those elections with elections in, an, in another area that are neighbors. We're not comparing one part of the world thousands or tens of thousands of miles away from another part of the world. These are two adjacent areas. Why did the media behave in one area unlike it behaved towards another area? And then, now that the religious parties have the central force or are going to have the central positions in the new government that is going to be or is being formulated nowadays, why doesn't the military prepare itself to interfere? We've had elections before in Muslim countries where Muslims won the elections never with this magnitude though. They won municipal elections, they've won minority positions in parliament, but then the military was ready to go into action. And in the case of Algeria, the military undid the elections. And if that is applied across the board, and if the media here is a fair broker, it looks at this Middle Eastern issue with the same eye, why doesn't it prepare the public mind for a military change or a military coup in Israel? It doesn't do that. Why? Obviously, because it favors the Jews coming to power, but it does not favor the Muslims coming to power. And when we say Jews here, we're talking about religious Jews, politically conscious Jews. And we talk about Muslims here, we're speaking about religious Muslims and politically conscious Muslims. So why is there a behavior from the Western powers towards the Muslims that is unlike their behaviors towards the Zionist Jews. And then they expect us to consider them an honest broker. They expect of the Muslims to consider them a judge in this affair when they are not taking equal positions towards two sides of a conflict. So there is no military change that's going to happen in Israel, but they always bring to your attention if there is going to be a change in Turkey, the military is going to interfere. Why do they say this? To prepare the Muslims for the type of policy 
policies that they have in mind that are unlike the types of policies that are applicable to Zionist Israeli Jews. The Muslims cannot accept these types of governments, these types of officials, and these types of rulers to be equidistant from Muslims and Jews when they always favor the Jews and they always disfavor the Muslims. And then look at these corrupt rulers in the Arab countries who are going to meet next week Exactly a week from today, they say they're going to convene a summit meeting in Cairo. It'd be better if they did not meet. But for the shenanigans and the charade of it all, they have to put on their shows and their theatrics. Meet to do what? been able out of any of their summits to take any action against the avowed enemy of Allah as their people understand that enemy. Their militaries go into action against their own people. Has anyone seen militaries belonging to these rulers, these heads of state who are going to meet next week in their summit meeting that have gone into all-out action against the Muslims' common enemy? Never. There were theatrics in the past, but there was never a sustained all-out war against the Zionist enemy. The only time their militaries went into war was when an Islamic State came into existence in the Middle East. That was when their militaries were mobilized to support the front line of what they called the defender of civilization in a protracted war that continued for eight years. But those who occupy their sanctuaries, their Qibla, their Haram, their militaries are not prepared to go into action against these Zionist Israeli Jews. What are they going to say to the public? How can they address the Muslim public when the new rulers in occupied Palestine are saying the following? They will not tolerate a Palestinian state. In Israeli politics, there's two sides to the center. There's the hypocritical left, and there's the fanatic right. They have just made a change from the hypocritical left that was trying to condition the public mind that the Palestinians deserve some type of self-rule. And we all know what they meant by that, that the Palestinians deserve a government that can kill its own people, modeled on the course of the other governments in the area. Governments capable of killing their own people. Demonstrations of that abound. Look at Bahrain. Look at Algeria. Look at other governments and how they've sprung into action, deployed their military and their security forces with technology accessible and available to them from the West to fight against their own people. And here, you have an Israeli government that has come into existence 
by a vote. This is not a matter of an individual who has been elected. They want to focus on an individual, but they don't want to focus on the 57% of the Jewish vote that went to that individual. It's not a razor sharp difference between the two. Perez and Netanyahu. It wasn't a cliffhanger. It was 57% Jewish vote for the fanatic right, as opposed to 43% of the Jewish vote for the hypocritical left. That is omitting the Arab vote or the Muslim vote in all of that. So what are they saying to us now? And how are these Arab heads of state, what are they going to say to their own people after it's been made clear that they're not going to countenance a Palestinian rule in the area? If Palestinians have to be killed in addition to subcontracting the killing process to other Palestinians, now the Zionists can jump in on this killing process and kill alongside the Palestinian Authority or whatever shreds of authority are left. That's issue number one. Issue number two, they will not return the Golan Heights. There's been a back and forth dubious exchange of public information on this issue. But now come the fanatics and they say, we will not return the Golan Heights. What are you going to say, you bilateral interlocutors and multilateral interlocutors? What are you going to say? to these Zionist Israeli Jews who are telling you this and telling the rest of the world this. We await your statements next week, which shall be in the course of your previous statements, hypocritical, deceitful, and lies. And then they go ahead. These Jewish Israeli Zionists that you've been talking with Remember, we don't have short memories. The Madrid conference began when these same right-wing fanatics were in control of the government in Israel. That's when Madrid was launched. It wasn't launched on the watch of the left-wing hypocrites. It was launched while the right-wing fanatics were in seats of power in Tel Aviv. Now they're back. And they're telling you that they're not going to have Jerusalem shared with non-Jews. That also goes for the Christians. It's not only the Muslims who are excluded from Al-Quds Jerusalem, the Christians also are excluded from Al-Quds Jerusalem. Of course, the Christians have dead churches. There are no clergymen speaking to their flock about the city of peace. It's supposed to be a city of peace. This Likud government is turning it into war headquarters. It's left up to the Muslims to speak up on this issue. And not only speak, but to act accordingly. So they're not going to permit Palestinian authority. They're not going to return the Golan Heights. They're not going to share Jerusalem. They're not going to let up on expanding their settlements. The American administration used to say, used to mumble words of opposition to what was called illegal settlements by high-ranking American officials. But that's history now. American officials have to kowtow 
to Israeli officials. The Israeli official is elected in Israel, but is ordained here in Washington, D.C. Look at the behavior of the person in the highest office. Even though this administration, the American scene, is just like the Israeli scene. You have the left of center, the Democrats who are hypocrites, and you have the right of center, the Republicans who are fanatics. And now, the American Democrats are bowing down in the altar of the Zionist Israeli Jewish interest, even though they were rooting for their counterparts, the Labour Party that lost in the elections, immediately when they knew, when the White House knew that Labour that Labour lost and Likud won, the president got on the phone. And he began to verbalize platitudes. He had handpicked an American naturalized Jewish ambassador to represent this country in that land. And now it's turning sour. But that doesn't upset hypocritical politicians. They change their colors with the seasons. And now they want to be friendly with this new administration that is in formation now. It hasn't appeared. But they know, they know that ruthless individuals are going to enter the decision-making positions in this new government now that's in gestation. Elio Sharon, the butcher of Lebanon, Etan, who is in charge here in the Israeli embassy in this city, of a crime that took place, the theft of the most confidential and classified secrets of the United States, handing it over to the Israeli government. Ten years ago, eleven years ago, not a very long time back, these right now qualify to become occupiers of ministerial positions. Sharon said just a few months ago, he said, in order to deter the Muslims from suicide operations, we should wrap the dead corpses of these suicidal Muslims in pig skin. You didn't read that in the Washington Post. You didn't read it in the New York Times. Why? Because the establishment media does not communicate newsworthy items. It has selective news to condition the public mind to accept the consensus that it is building for policies that are thought out in the dungeons of Foggy Bottom and the White House. This is the type of government that is coming into existence now, that wants to strike against Muslims, that doesn't want Muslims to understand their Islam with its political and economic content. They are allowed to think. They are allowed to think out their political and economic problems on the basis of Judaism. But Muslims are not allowed to think of a solution to their economic and political problems on the basis of Islam. This is made very clear. They are direct, frank, and blunt about it. And contributing to all of this misery 
are those who go to establishment masjids and temples where they are given a lullaby khutbah and they are not made aware of these issues that will affect our lives. These are people now who are going to come into positions. We're going to be back with the old Reagan crew here in Washington. Those who are favored by the Israeli fanatical right. This Netanyahu and his mentor, Moshe Aarons. Remember the Israeli ambassador here during the Reagan years? That is the mentor of this new prime minister in Israel. Along with the rest of the operations that we lived through when they occupied half of Lebanon in the 1980s. When they were responsible for the massacres of Sabra and Shatila. Now their connections are going to resurface here in Washington DC. And what are the Arab heads of state going to say about this in Cairo next week? If one of that, one or two of them say statements of truth, they are going to be buried by the will of the American administration to dictate to these heads of state what to say and what to do more importantly after that. And the Muslims are not going to be fooled by all of this. Don't consider Allah to be absent from these machinations of tyrants and oppressors. We don't consider Allah to be absent from this process. What is happening here in the United States on the political level? Whatever the outcome of the elections are going to be in a few months, it will always be in the service of their masters who have usurped our land, who have occupied our homeland, and who are trying to dictate to us what to do in the future. And when we say that Allah's plans, when, when we say that Allah's plan supersedes and overwhelms their plan, we say this while Allah is actively involved in our lives, as He truly is when we take a look and how the Zionists are beginning to reel under pressure from Muslims in Palestine and in Lebanon, among other places. The Zionist Jews cannot understand how Muslims with limited facilities who are outnumbered don't have any technology are bleeding the Zionist military machine in Lebanon there's a hemorrhage there's a Zionist hemorrhage in Lebanon you think that 57% of the Jewish vote went to the fanatics for nothing? No. Jewish life is dear to them. You will find them the most attached people to life. They don't want to part from life. They want to dwell in this life forever. And they can't tolerate being killed off one after one in Lebanon. And how can these people do it? With Katyushas. And they have 
the sophisticated military machine that they have. Now, they're going to try once again to opt for a military solution. Not knowing and not realizing what their first choice 15 years ago for a military solution against the Muslim, what that did to them. If they want to recruit Muslims to the military front, let them use the military option. If they want to mobilize Muslims against them, let them use the military option. If they want to expose their Arab extensions, the Arab rulers, to the wrath of their own people, let them use the military option. And whatever they do, they will remain confused. Whatever they do will be to the advantage of those who are committed to Allah. And we are certain of this. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And those who rely upon Allah, He suffices them. He is enough for them. You hear that? Zionist Israeli Jews, you still don't believe in God. Even though your military is being defeated by God and not by man. It's not our limited resources as committed Muslims. It is not we who are the purpose and the reason for you beginning to taste the results of defeat. Is the presence of Allah in our lives. A presence that is growing to your detriment and to the increase of your fear and the terror in your hearts. A development that we welcome unless and until you see the light, a prospect that is as remote as the stars. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله سبحانه وأنتم على يقين بالإجابة وتوبوا إلى الله إن الله تواب رحيم الحمد لله بجميع المحامد على جميع النعم صلى الله وسلم على المبعوث خيرا ورحمة وهدى لكافة الأمم محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Muslims of determination confidence and reliance upon Allah as this world is beginning to contract and as we are on the verge of very defining events, we live in a society Regrettably speaking, that is on its way to what seems to be a race war. Unfortunately, this is a sad comment on a society that is riddled with racism. of the media in an election year as the time is approaching for the presidential election here in the United States to have the media focus on black churches being burned in the south to a Muslim
tells them this sounds odd we thought that this society has gotten rid of divisions of race segregation bigotry for two and a half decades they bus children to schools from one part of the town to the other to create an understanding among the races in the United States. But lo and behold, the news that is flashing to our attention nowadays gives us the impression, and we are, as Muslims, we are not churchgoers, we don't go to churches. So we don't know how mixed churches are desegregated churches are, how assimilated churches are, but now with the news that we're hearing, it turns out that churches that are supposed to be the place where fellow human beings respect themselves their equality, prove their brotherhood, turns out still after all of these years of talk about civil rights, equality, and the rest of all of this worn out rhetoric, the churches in this country are still segregated. And so you have people burning black churches. We don't know exactly who these people are now, but we do know racism is well and kicking in this country. It's not only the burning of black churches, of course the politicians want to use this to have the minorities in this country vote democratic. What did the Democrats do as far as race relations are concerned during their administrations? We're once again back to the hypocritical left. And American politics are caught between a, a rock and a hard place. It's either, just like Israeli politics, a hypocritical left or a fanatical right. There's no siratun mustaqim in their lives. They don't have what it takes to solve these problems. Should we remind you of the racial issues that are just beneath the surface? Even the administration of this city here, Washington DC has become a problem because in the white establishment, this is an African American city. And so the money is running away. And they have to close down schools in these neighborhoods. Oh, you mean to say there's plenty of money to go to Israel and there's no money to go to African American neighborhoods and communities or white American, Euro American neighborhoods and communities that need this money more than these people overseas? What happened? What happened to these people who are elected to office? You would think by now that the average American would be fed up with this political system of twiddle-dee-dee and twiddle-dee-doo that gives no solutions to the problems here and is complicating them. It was revealed a few years ago that one of the high-ranking officials, a Grand Dragon or whatever he's called, 
of the Ku Klux Klan was a Jew in the South. It's not far-fetched. And we, in this area, in the Washington, D.C. area, a couple of years ago, there were some what is called hate crimes committed at one of the centers in this area to give the impression that it was an anti-Muslim hate crime. And upon investigation, it turns out that Jews, Zionist Israeli Jews, had a hand in that hate crime. They probably have hands in other hate crimes around. If they're plugged into racist outfits in this country and religious organizations in this country, they even do it to themselves. Their history is replete with it. Be careful before you are taken. Extend our hand of support to all those who want a way out of this racism. And we are not going to be polarized for one race against another race just because of the racial makeup of a particular part of humanity. There's more to human value than the color of the skin. It is an ayah of Allah that he has created us in these hues and colors. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ إِخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ and of his ayat is the difference of your languages and your colors. You're not going to recruit us to racism directly or indirectly. We're not going to react on the basis of race. And we hope that the American public in general will not be led down this dangerous slope, even though the indications are strong that it is going in that direction. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa rizuqna tiba'a wa arina al-baatila baatilan wa rizuqna ijtinaba wa la taj'alhu multabisan alayna wa ja'alna lilmuttaqina imama Rabbana innana sami'na munadiyan yunadi lil-eeman أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وآل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها 
وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعم ما يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة Oh, 
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله